Hi, Jim Sevier with Convergence Readiness, and today we're going to talk about shortest path bridging opportunities, specifically uh, how you can use shortest path bridging as a door opener into specific accounts. Uh, what I've done here is I've categorized a number of different opportunities that I believe that shortest path bridging can play a significant role to gaining access to the data center and to IT in general, uh, specifically the, the senior level of IT within pretty much any vertical and any market that you're, that you're going to be into. So let's look, let's break these down individually and I'll give you a short explanation of each one. The first element, the first category is, is opportunities that deal with simplification. Look, the network is getting more complex. It has been over the last 15, 20 years, uh, traditional legacy routing technologies have just overwhelmed the network with a significant amount of overhead. There is a significant amount of time, energy, and effort with a lot of protocols built on top of each other. And IT departments are now considering the thought of simplifying their networks, getting their networks simpler to manage and maintain and a simpler network to architect. Uh, so any opportunity that you walk into where you see a very complex environment, where you see multiple protocols and multiple vendors, and you, your opportunity here is to, is to introduce the element of simplification and what shortest path bridging can bring to you there. Now I'm going to do another video on shortest path bridging simplification, so look forward to that in this series. The next category is the category of resilience. Um, now what you're seeing in, in as well in IT data centers is multiple data centers, duplicated data centers, data centers and network infrastructures where maybe spanning tree protocol or a number of, again, those legacy routing protocols have have caused the network in order for it to work have actually shut down you know somewhere near to half the ports that are in the network just so that the network could stay in an operational mode you know networks companies that are looking to become more resilient but in addition to that they want to take advantage of their installed and capitalized equipment the equipment that they've already purchased and it's it's sort of referred to as an all active you know, networking infrastructure where no real port is offline, right? So in traditional routing, legacy routing technology, um, there needed to be a straight line of networking. There couldn't be any loops in the network. And with shortest path bridging, you don't have that issue. So in effect, you can gain back a significant amount of throughput and bandwidth just by putting in shortest path bridging into a, a network from a resilience perspective. So we're gonna talk about that and a few other capabilities that shortest path bridging can bring to the table under the shortest path bridging opportunity resilience video. So look for, look for that. The third category is that of security. You're, here you're, you're looking at opportunities where uh, there's a compliance issue, right? In the retail industry with PCI, with healthcare and HIPAA requirements, there is a, uh, there is, there is more and more regulatory compliance re being required each year in each of those industries to maintain the integrity of the data that's on the network. And again, traditional legacy routing protocols have had a very difficult time uh, staying ahead of the game and providing an environment without having to duplicate networks and create entirely separate net physical networks in order to run uh, in a compliant network. So I'm gonna talk to you in the uh, shortest path bridging opportunity security video about a number of opportunities that you can find within uh, that can support PCI compliance, HIPAA compliance, and a number of other uh, regulatory compliance uh, industries. So look forward to that uh, in another one of the videos. So the last issue or the last category is that of scale. Now this, there's a lot of issues associated with scale within a network, right? You build a network, initially to support your environment today. And then eventually that environment gets larger. And over time, that network just becomes a series of more and more and more and more boxes, which, which in traditional legacy routing technology equates to more and more protocols. The more applications you lay on top of that network, again, the more protocols you lay on that network. Shortest path bridging can bring something very interesting to the table for 
companies that are, that are having a difficult time keeping up with scale. And you're looking at city and state governments, you're looking at large organizations, large um, uh, multi-site locations, or just looking at businesses that have accumulated a lot of businesses and have bought, uh, inorganically bought a lot of organizations and they're trying to bring them under the control of a centralized IT organization. And those types of opportunities, um, uh, shortest path bridging can address from a multiple, from a multitude of features and capability sets. So I'm going to go through that in the shortest path bridge opportunity for scale video. So look forward to that one. So these are the four main categories of opportunities with shortest path bridging, and you can see in the uh, in the YouTube area that you'll see that each one of these are are uh, identified by the type of video that I'll be going through. So you'll see a video on simplification, SPB resilience, SPB security, and SPB scale. So look for them, and I uh, will talk to you on those videos. Thanks.